see if this works. Okay, so I am, it should work. Awesome. Um, I'm wearing all of this uh, for a visual to get the point across about something that's very important that's going on here in the United States and the whole wide world um, that people need to really understand um, because the world is pretty wicked and um, that sucks. So <laughs> starting in, um, I have a Bible here, um, Romans 1, 18. It says, if you'll read along with me, uh, what is revealed in God's anger from heaven against all the godless, godlessness and wickedness of people who in their wickedness keep suppressing the truth. Something going on right now in the United States of America that the whole world is also watching. If you hear any noise, by the way, that's the uh, washing machine in the background. But uh, I'll read that again in 118. It says, what is revealed is God's anger from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who in their wickedness keep suppressing the truth. Continuing, because what is known about God is plain to them since God has made it plain to them. <clears throat> for ever since the creation of the universe his invisible qualities both his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen because they can be understood from what he has made therefore they have no excuse because although they know who god is they do not glorify him as God or thank him. On the contrary, they have become futile in their thinking and their undiscerning hearts have become darkened. Claiming to be wise, they have become fools. In fact, they have exchanged the glory of the immortal God for mere images like a mortal human being or like birds, animals, or reptiles. This is why God has given them up to the vileness of their heart's lust, to the shameful misuse of each other's bodies. They have exchanged the truth of God for falsehood. By worshiping and serving created things rather than the creator. You see that going on if you'll pay attention and look around the media and the news and the world, Easter and Christmas and St. Nicholas and the Easter bunny, Ishtar bunny, uh, what's it called? Saranarchus, Saturnalia. Um, Yule, all those Antichrist holidays where one worships many gods, but then there's others, Celebrum, where people worship Will Smith and um, Jada Pinkett Smith and worship Chris Rock and worship um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk doesn't want to be worshiped. Donald Trump, and I'm not sure that he actually wants to be worshiped. And yet people would rather worship them than seek God and worship him. Because they don't want to see him because well, we'll get to that. Praised be he forever. Amen. This is why God has given them up to degrading passions, so that their women exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural. And likewise, the men giving up their natural relationships for the opposite sex burn with passion for one another men committing shameful acts with other men and receiving in their own passions the penalty appropriate to their perversion. It's right here in the Word. It's right here. 
It's in Romans 1. Or is that just skipped for the sake of the fact that it makes people feel like crap? In other words, since they have not considered God worth knowing, God has given them up to worthless ways of thinking so that they do improper things. They are filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and vice, stuffed with jealousy, murder, quarreling, and dishonesty, and ill will. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God. They are insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They plan evil schemes. They disobey their parents. They are brainless, says it here, brainless faithless, heartless, and ruthless. They know well enough God's righteous decree that people who do such things deserve to die, yet not only do they keep doing them, but they applaud others who do the same. So continuing in two. Therefore, you have no excuse whoever you are, passing judgment. For when you judge someone else, you are passing judgment against yourself. Since you, who are judging, do the same things he does. We know that God's judgment lands impartially on those who do such things. Do you think that you, a mere man, passing judgment on others, who do such things, yet doing them yourself will escape the judgment of God. Or perhaps you despise the riches of his kindness, forbearance and patience, because you don't realize that God's kindness is intended to lead you to turn from your sins. But by your stubbornness, by your unrepentant heart, you are stirring up anger for yourself on the day of anger when God's righteous judgment will be revealed for he will pay back each one according to his deeds. To those who seek glory, honor, and immortality by perseverance in doing good, he will pay back eternal life. But to those who are self-seeking, who disobey the truth and obey evil, he will pay back with wrath and anger. Yes, he will pay back misery and anguish to every human being who does evil, to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. But glory and honor and shalom to everyone who keeps doing what is good to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. I'll repeat that. For God, that's 2.11, Romans 2.11. For God does not show favoritism. All who have sinned, outside of the framework of the Torah will die outside the framework of the Torah. And all who have sinned within the framework of the Torah will be judged by the Torah. For it is not merely the hearers of the Torah whom God considers righteous. Rather, it is the doers of what the Torah says who will be made righteous in God's sight. For whenever Gentiles who have no Torah do naturally what the Torah requires, then these, even though they don't have Torah for themselves, are Torah. For their lives show that the conduct of the Torah dictates is written in their hearts. Their consciences also bear witness to this, 
for their conflicting thoughts, sometimes accuse them and sometimes defend them. On a day when God passes judgment on people's inmost secrets. As according to the good news, as I proclaim it, he does this through the Messiah, Yeshua. But if you call yourself a Jew and rest on Torah and boast about God and know his will and give your approval to what is right because you have been instructed from the Torah. And if you have persuaded yourself that you are a guide to the blind, a light to the darkness, an instructor for the spiritually unaware and a teacher of children, since it was, sorry, since in the Torah you have the embodiment of knowledge and truth, then you who teach others, don't you teach yourself? Preaching, thou shalt not steal. Do you steal? Saying, thou shalt not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? Detesting idols. Do you commit idolatrous acts? You who take such pride in Torah, do you, by disobeying Torah, dishonor God? As it says in Sinach, for it is because of you that God's name is blasphemed by the Gentiles. For circumcision is indeed of the value, of value if you do what the Torah says. But if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the Torah, won't his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? Let me explain something real quick. Um, so circumcision is really meant uh, spiritually in the heart. Um, it's not just circumcision, which, which I've done. And yeah, it was terrible for about like, three days. Uh, that was as according to my mom. Um, really not that big of a deal. And it's really important. But, you know, you got your people who are wicked who are doing everything they can to dis dismember uh, a faith and a religion because they want us to worship their gods, but they say that there is no God, but oh, I think I'm saying too much. Circumcision is supposed to be a spiritual thing. Indeed, continuing 27, indeed the man who is physically uncircumcised, but obeys the Torah will stand as a judgment on you who have a Brit Milah, and have Torah written out, but violated. For the real Jew is not merely Jewish outwardly. True circumcision is not only external and physical, but the contrary, the real Jew is one inwardly and true circumcision is of the heart, spiritual, not little, so that his praise comes from other people or comes not from other people sorry but from god so now skip ahead Chapter three to, well, well, I'll continue with chapter three. So then what advantage has the Jew? What is the value of being circumcised? Much in every way. In the first place, the Jews were entrusted with the very word of God. If some of them were unfaithful, so what? Does their faithfulness cancel God's faithfulness? Heaven forbid, God, who God would be true even if everyone were a liar. As Tanakh says, so that you, God, may be proved right in your words and win the verdict when you are put on trial. 
Now, if our righteousness highlights God's righteousness, we should, what should we say? That God is unrighteous to inflict his anger on us? I'm speaking here the way people commonly do. Heaven forbid. Else, how could God judge the world? But you say, if through my lie, God's truth is enhanced and brings his greater glory, why am I still judged merely for being a sinner? Indeed, why not say, as some people slander us by claiming we do say, let us do evil so that the good may come from it. Against them, the judgment is just one. When I was a kid, a man, I told my wife this earlier, a man said to me that because I'm a Jew, I would pick the lesser of two evils. I was just like, that sounds crazy. You sound like a crazy person. I feel like it's important to share that though. Lesser of two evils. And I, I tried in uh, 2012 um, to bring that as far as I could to get the point across to the guy who still didn't get it. Yeah doesn't help to be snarky all the time. So to continue. So are we Jews better off? Not entirely. For I have already made the charge that all people, Jews and Gentiles alike, are controlled by sin. As the Tanakh puts it, there is no one righteous. Not even one. No one understanding, no one understands, no one seeks God. All have turned away. And at the same time, become useless. There is no one who shows kindness. Not a single one. The throats are open graves. They use their tongues to deceive. Viper's venom is under their lips. Their mouths are full of curses and bitterness. Their feet rush to shed blood. In their ways are ruin and misery. And the way of shalom, they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And so I took off this here. Because for me, this is, I, I wear it because I like to wear it. Um, but I was told that I'm supposed to wear this specifically to say that God is above me. And it's supposed to let everybody else know that God is above me. But if no one else knows that, then it's considerably religious. It's a religious item, right? So then other people would see me as self-righteous. Not righteous. And then it kind of like goes out the window just gone but I wear it because I like to wear it sometimes sometimes I wear a hat sometimes I don't wear anything on my head at all because God is above me God is around me God is within me so moreover we know that whatever the Torah says it says to those living within the framework of the Torah, in order that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world be shown to deserve God's adverse judgment. For in his sight, no one alive will be considered righteous. On the ground of legalistic observance of Torah commands, because what the Torah really does is show people how sinful they are. That's what the Torah does. So I'll read that again. Uh, Romans 3, uh, verse 20. For in his sight, no one alive will be considered righteous. On the ground of legalistic observance of Torah commands, because what Torah really does is it shows people how sinful they are. That's for all those people out there keep screaming at me that I just need to read the Torah. Um, 
do read the Torah, but it's supposed to show you how simple you are. It's what it's supposed to do. Um, but now, quite apart from Torah, God's way of making people righteous in his sight has been made clear. Although the Torah and the prophets give their witness to it as well, and it is a righteousness that comes from God through the faithfulness of Yeshua, the Messiah, to all who continue trusting. For it makes no difference whether one is a Jew or a Gentile. No difference. No difference. No difference. Since all have sinned and come short of earning God's praise, By God's grace, without earning it, all are granted the status of being considered righteous before him. Through the act of redeeming us from our enslavement to sin that was accomplished by the Messiah, Yeshua, God put Yeshua forward as the kapara for sin through his faithfulness in respect to his bloody sacrificial death. This vindicated God's righteousness because in his forbearance, he had passed over with neither punishment nor remission the sins people had committed in the past. And it vindicates his righteousness in the present age by showing that he is righteousness himself and is also the one who makes people righteous on the grounds of Yeshua's faithfulness. So what room is left for boasting? None at all. What kind of Torah excludes it? One that has to do with legalistic observance of rules? No. Rather, a Torah that has to do with trusting. Therefore, we hold the view that a person comes to be considered righteous by God on the ground of trusting, which has nothing to do with legalistic observance of Torah commands. Is God God for the Jews only? Isn't he also God for the Gentiles? Yes, indeed, God is for the Gentiles. Because as you will admit, God is one. Therefore, he will consider righteous the circumcised on the ground of trusting and the uncircumcised. With the same trusting, does it follow that we abolish Torah by this trusting? Heaven forbid. On the contrary, we confirm Torah. Heaven forbid. So I, I want to I want to teach the lesson and make it clear. And I'm also reading this. I've also read this for everyone who is um, out there in YouTube land and people that I know who um, need to see me read it. Because you know that some people, they don't feel like you believe in the word of God unless you read the word of God in front of them instead of going on faith. to some people some people don't even have faith and some people are wicked and some people suppress the truth of god which is what's going on also this is a test because i'm using zoom to record this i want to see if it works may the lord bless you and keep you may he keep his face on you and may he give you peace and shalom